I am Omega Pax. This is the history of the Headmaster's Transformers. Return of the Immortal Emperor Return of the Immortal Emperor is the 16th episode of Transformers The Headmasters. It first aired in Japan on November 20th, 1987, on Nippon TV. In the middle of Scorponok's coronation as the new Decepticon Emperor, the Autobots attack and an old enemy makes a surprise return. In the aftermath of the destruction of Mars, RC, Spike, and Broadside survey the field of rubble that remains. Attempting to discern what effects the loss of the planet has had on the solar system, they report back to Athena that the damage done is just within safety limits, and Fortress and the Headmasters become determined to keep track on the Decepticons' movements before any further planets can fall victim to them. As they talk outside, Wheelie and Daniel argue, with Wheelie's fear for Autobot safety being shouted down by Daniel's insisting that Fortress is stronger than Scorpinox. Daniel pushes Wheelie into a lake, but their argument is immediately forgotten when a mysterious, iridescent globe of light swoops down out of the sky, spraying water everywhere as it flies low over the lake, and then vanishes into the sky. The Headmasters have since departed to monitor the Decepticon movements, and Fortress soon receives a report of Daniel and Wheelie's mysterious UFO sighting. Such things are not the concern of Chrome Dome and Hardhead, however, who refuse to partake of such passive action against the Decepticons. In an attempt to be more proactive, they sneak out of Battleship Maximus and head over to Char on their own. Although they are able to sneak past the lone sentry patrolling the planet's perimeter, Blitzwing, they are unaware that Scorpinox has been made aware of the Headmaster's movements by his intelligence officer, Counterpunch, and has allowed the two Autobots to get as close as they have. Scorpinox transforms into Scorpion mode and carries the Decepticon Headmasters into space, where they defeat Chrome Dome and Hardhead, and send them hurtling back to collide with the approaching Battleship Maximus. The two warships collide, and Scorpinox transforms into robot mode and thrashes Maximus, when suddenly the strange glowing UFO appears over their heads. Using the distraction, the Autobots are able to escape, and the Decepticons puzzle over what the mysterious object is as it disappears into the depths of space. Back down on Char, Soundblaster receives an unhappy report from Ravage and Laserbeak on how Counterpunch has showed them up by finding out information that they couldn't. Soundblaster takes his team to Earth in the hopes of digging up some new information to improve his standing, but a search meets with nothing but failure, a fact that Sixshot is not afraid of pointing out. As the two stand outside the Decepticon's Earth base, the UFO appears in the sky and floats down. Sound Blaster dives behind a rock for cover when the UFO bathes Sixshot in a bright light. And a second later, as the amazed communication officer emerges, both Sixshot and the UFO have vanished. As the Headmasters return to Athena, Daniel is trying out a trick he saw in a movie, using a musical keyboard to play a tune in the hopes of contacting the UFO. The Headmasters crowd around, with Fortress wondering if the alien is friend or foe. But time passes and nothing happens. A while later, Fortress is led by Twincast to meet with the Autobots' new informant. It is Counterpunch, who steps from the shadows with his gun drawn. However, he reveals his true identity. Counterpunch is really Punch, an Autobot double agent within the Decepticon camp. Punch explains to Fortress that the Decepticons are active on Earth's moon where they are planning to hold a ceremony for Scorpinox's coronation as the new Decepticon Emperor. In the Sea of Tranquility on the Moon, Cyclonus introduces Scorpinox to the assembled Decepticons, and Scorpinox proclaims himself the new Decepticon Emperor. No sooner are these words spoken, however, than Battleship Maximus and the Trainbots appear overhead. Deploying the Headmasters, Aerialbots, Protectobots, and Technobots for battle, Scorpinox again transforms into his giant robot mode and attacks Battleship Maximus. And once again, the UFO suddenly appears, just as Sound Blaster arrives to try and inform Scorpinox of what he has learned. The Autobots are all cut down by energy beams emanated from the UFO, and Sixshot steps out of the light, much to the Decepticon's surprise. Then, as the light dims, its source is revealed. The UFO is a spacecraft which projects a beam of purple light down to the lunar surface. From this beam, a familiar figure strides. It's Galvatron. 
Both Autobot and Decepticons react with total shock, but the reappearance of their leader gives the villains their second wind, and the Autobots are forced to retreat, quietly incensed that his leadership is clearly over before it has truly begun. Scorponox demands to know where Galvatron has been. Galvatron claims to have been observing, interested in seeing how the Decepticons would function without him. He commends Scorponox for the strides he has made for the Decepticons' cause in his absence, but quickly makes it clear that he is now back in charge. As the Autobots observe the ceremony from Athena, Daniel, now realizing what the UFO was, smashes his keyboard and runs from the room, more angry at himself than anything. Wheelie catches up to him and soothes his temper, but the specter of Galvatron's renewed evil hovers over the Autobots.